Hello everyone. I hope you've had a good week and hope you're all well. Uh, our lesson today is rejected and it's in Luke chapter 4 beginning with the 16th verse and the memory verses are 18 and 19. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you for this time to come together and study your word. And Lord, I pray that you help me to teach it in a way that's easily understood. Please, Lord, forgive me where I fail you. Lord, I pray for those that are sick. We pray especially for a pastor and his family. And uh, Lord, pray for others that are in the hospital and recovering at home. And uh, Lord, so many sick around us, Lord. And we pray for uh, healing. And uh, Lord, we pray for our church. Pray for the leaders of our church. Pray for the congregation as a whole. And Lord, we just lift those up, Lord, that are in need of your touch, whether it be spiritual, mental, or physical. And Lord, I just ask all this in Jesus' precious name. And I thank you most of all for Jesus. Amen. Our lesson today is uh, kind of about decisions. You know, decisions are very important sometimes, and sometimes they're kind of a minor thing. What kind of socks you're going to put on today or what kind of outfit you're going to wear. They really don't matter a lot, but then sometimes decisions are big decisions, important decisions. And uh, some decisions I call crossroad decisions. As you look back over your life, you realize as you get older, especially that you had crossroad decisions and those decisions led your life. And uh, hopefully it was because the Lord was leading us the way we made the decision. But most of the time we, we can tell when he was uh, guiding us and when we were leading ourselves because we usually mess up when it's just us. But um, some decisions bring us peace. And some decisions bring sorrow. Uh, in our lesson today, we see Jesus going home to Nazareth. And the people there made an important decision. So let's begin by reading verses 16 through 19. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Jesus had just been through some mountaintop experiences and kind of some low experiences. Uh, he, uh, of course, had just been baptized in the Jordan River by John the Baptist, and that was kind of a high point. You know, uh, John professed him as the Messiah, and uh, God the Father uh, spoke from heaven and said, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. And uh, so that, of course, had to be a, a, a great moment in Jesus' uh, life here on earth to hear those words that he was doing well, uh, serving the Father. And uh, have you ever noticed how a spiritual high often uh, will come before a spiritual test? Uh, I can remember very well years ago being in a, a, a study at church, and our pastor then, um, he was asking about our frame of mind and where we were in our lives, and and uh, I just said, you know, I'm in such a great place right now. I, I'm really happy, and, and things are going well, and he smiled, and he looked at me, and he said, that's wonderful. Enjoy it, because Anna, it's not going to last. And I remember at the time thinking, you know, it was kind of a Debbie Downer, but he was speaking the truth because uh, it doesn't last long. Our hilltops don't last long, and uh, we have to go through those valleys as well. But, um, you know, uh, Jesus' baptism was a very special event, and immediately, you know, after that joyful event, uh, which uh, was, like I said, one of those top-of-the-mountain experiences, uh, he went into the desert uh, or into the wilderness. And, uh, you know, uh, it just affirms to us that we will have 
those highs and lows because Jesus did in his own life. And uh, just because we are Christians, it does not mean everything in our lives is going to be perfect. And uh, we're going to have those smooth roads and we're going to have those bumpy roads. And uh, hardships and challenges come to us and uh, they will always come to us uh, until the end of our lives. So after his baptism, as I said, Jesus was uh, tested. He went into the wilderness and the devil tested him. <clears throat> Excuse me. And after all that, what did he do? He went home. And uh, I thought about that a lot when I was reading this scripture, you know, about Jesus going home. And uh, of course, his home was his heavenly home. But Sometimes we want to go home, don't we? We just want to go home. And, and really, it's not the place as much as the feeling of security, perhaps, that we had at that moment. Some of us didn't have real secure childhoods. And, uh, and, but still, there are moments uh, that we cling to uh, in our lives as children. <clears throat> but anyway, uh, so... Jesus stood up after, okay, he goes to Nazareth and he goes to the synagogue and he is uh, allowed to read, which was a custom at that time. Visitors were asked to read or allowed to read. And uh, so uh, he he was invited and he, I was also, in, they said, would be invited to make comments on the scripture that he read. So Jesus read from Isaiah 61, the first through the second verse, and I'm going to read that for us. It says, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of our Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn. So all the things that had happened, uh, all these things that happened. So Jesus uh, could come forth and begin his ministry, his real true earthly ministry. And uh, he had been anointed or empowered by God the Father to do the preaching and the things that he would do. In verses 20 uh, through 21, it sort of tells us that Jesus, uh, when he finished reading, that all eyes were fastened on him and amazed at him, astounded at him. Uh, especially when Jesus said, this day, this scripture is fulfilled in your ears. Now, you think about it. These are people he grew up with. These are people that have known him all his life. Uh, to them, he was Joseph and Mary's son uh, who was raised, you know, in a carpenter's home and uh, was a child like any other child. But the people really re received his words graciously, it says, uh, even... Uh, you know, talking among themselves and saying, gosh, isn't this Joseph's son? That, uh, and uh, so he was most likely, you know, speaking, like I said, in front of people who had known him for many years, knew his family, looked at him as an ordinary man. And uh, they had heard rumors, of course, by now about his uh, ability to heal. And uh, so instead of grasping what Jesus was thinking or saying, they were kind of thinking ahead. Uh, gosh, if he's this healer, if he's this miracle worker, then uh, if he's here in Nazareth, we can take advantage of that. And uh, he could let, we'll let him do things for us. So uh, they kind of missed his message in, uh, by immediately thinking about what Jesus could do for them, you know, instead of what he was really saying to them. Uh, what healing, what miracles could he do for us? If he can do that over in Capernaum, then, you know, look what he might could do for us. And uh, But Jesus would not allow their misunderstanding of who he was or his purpose to push him to do anything that would uh, go against uh, what he was really truly there to do. You know, that's what Satan had just done. He had tempted him to use his power or, or uh, call down the power, you know, of, uh, of his father to help him or do minister to him or do things for him. And so he was not going to use his divine power for personal advantage. And uh, in verses 24 through 27, uh, Jesus goes on to say that no prophet uh, is accepted in his own country. Uh, you know, you think about that. If, uh, if a young man uh, grows up in our church today and... Uh, he was a child and grew up, you know, and, and he's a, now a, 
a, a good man and a good father and a good husband. And, uh, you know, a lot of people still remember what a mean little feller he was, you know. And uh, so that's the kind of people, you know, that that that's how they were kind of looking at Jesus. Not looking at the person they had become, but remembering, you know, the child they were. So uh, sometimes we look, we have to look past the familiar, you know, to see the potential in someone or some situation. Um, you know, I think it's a human flaw, you know. Uh, so as Jesus began to speak to these people, they began to examine what they thought they knew about him. Uh, like I said, they probably watched him grow up. They knew his family. They knew his background. And, uh, but even if he was a miracle worker, you know, they kind of thought, well, he, he needs to keep his place. He, you know, he, he doesn't need to get too big for his britches just because he can do a little something. And unfortunately, I'm, I, that's probably exactly what some of these uh, people were thinking. Uh, and then when he began to say things that were not in keeping with what they wanted to hear, uh, then that made them uncomfortable. Uh, as Jesus continued to speak, he reminded them that God did not... Uh, accept people based on their religious backgrounds or their religious heritage and but by their faith well this infuriated them this just infuriated them remember all jews believed that they had a extra step up because they were uh, descendants of abraham and so they thought that made them special in some way and gave them a, a closer walk with the lord and uh, so he just called them out on it, and he said, it's your faith that saves you. It's your faith that uh, that makes you whole. And uh, it's not who you're related to, not who your ancestors are. And uh, so Jesus challenged that belief. Okay, now we're going to read in 28 and 30. And all they in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath and rose up and thrust him out of the city and led him into unto the brow of the hill whereon their city was built that they might cast him down headlong but he passed but he passing through the midst of them went his way um, we see that they become very angry very emotional uh, uh, wrath it, wrath is it is extreme anger that's what wrath means and I, I read something in a lesson, and I, I could not help but think when I read it how true it was. And uh, I wanted to read it for you. It says, people who are emotionally invested in a belief often become enraged if their belief is opposed. I want to read that again. People who are emotionally invested in a belief often become enraged if their belief is opposed. Uh, wow. Uh, have we not seen this very thing uh, in the last week or so? Uh, these very words come to life in recent days as we saw people um, whose beliefs were opposed uh, go into our capital. And uh, it says these people in the synagogue uh, that day when Jesus was speaking, they were so sure that they were right that they became so angry uh, with extreme anger, uh, wrath, extreme anger, that they became an emotional mob. They rose up and they thrust him out of the city. Uh, they were so angry that they meant to toss him off of a great hill and kill him. And... Uh, throwing him over a cliff. When we use our religious beliefs, because we know it said Jesus passed. I believe he walked out of there and they didn't even see him leave. I believe he walked right through them and they were so emotionally uh, distraught uh, that he just walked, walked away. And uh, whether it was by uh, supernatural power or just on his own, he walked out of there and he left them behind. Uh, so when we use our religious beliefs or our political be beliefs as an excuse to impose our faith or our beliefs on someone else using violence, 
uh, using force of any kind, attacking someone, challenging someone, because they don't believe like you do. Uh, we have become so obsessed with seeing things our own way. Uh, we no longer consider or respect the faith and the beliefs of other people. Uh, so what did Jesus do? Uh, in this midst of this uh, turmoil, this midst of prejudice, he was surrounded by, he walked away. He walked away. Uh, these people rejected Jesus. They did not accept who he really was. He went back to healing the sick, casting out demonic uh, spirits, preaching the gospel. Uh, he just kept on doing the things that he always had done and would continue to do. Uh, but he left those behind who rejected him. He moved forward. Uh, rejection did not change who Jesus was. He was the same. Uh, then he's the same today. Uh, when people refuse to believe in Christ, uh, their lack of faith will affect them and where they spend eternity, but it doesn't change who Jesus is. He is our Lord. He is our Savior. Uh, we are to trust in Him. We will face rejection like He did because He said we would and uh, not be surprised when we are rejected because of our faith or because of our beliefs. Uh, but we should keep our focus on Jesus and who he is and he, who he wants us to be. I hope you've enjoyed the lesson today, and I hope you are doing well. And uh, we just pray for those that are sick. And, and uh, we know there are many, and, and we have family members who are sick. And uh, we just pray for God's healing for, all, for us all. Uh, and I hope that uh, we'll all be back together soon, but we'll just wait this thing out and do the best we can. Uh, until next time, much love.